Hey guys, Aaron here. Now, if you've seen any of the other videos on my channel, you would know that I just love to take photos. And I know that digital cameras look better and cleaner and, and having digital files are more convenient, but there's just something about taking a photo on an actual piece of film that comes back as something you can hold and see in your hands. And something about that is just so... Magical? Ah, yes, thank you, Patch. Now, I've always shot on ectochrome or color negative film that always have to be sent out and developed, but I never developed film myself before I went to college and took a photography class. In my photography class, there was a dark room where you could develop your own film and put your film in enlargers and shoot them on photography paper so you can make your own prints. Now, this isn't going to be a video on how to develop black and white film. There's lots of other videos on YouTube about that. I'm just gonna show you the photo that I took. Yeah, lots of stuff. Okay, so for the photography class, there was a bunch of assignments that I had to do. I had to take photos with a specific function of the camera, like aperture and depth of field and, and freeze frame and stuff like that. So this was the first role I ever shot and developed myself. There was a fairground going on near my house, so I decided to bring my camera and shoot a bunch of stuff there. Okay, let's get a light panel up in here. So here are all the negatives, and, <laughs> and if I do say so myself, I think I developed them pretty well for our first try. And here are a bunch of scans that I took of all these photos. So the first shots I took were of a troublesome truck near my house. The inside of it and the wheel. And then I took shots of my bike. And the rest of the shots were at the fairground. The Ferris wheel, the merry-go-round. even the pirate swing ride. And look, here's a bunch of pictures of a cow called Wrinkles. My next role was framing, and the whole rest of the role I shot at a old abandoned mill. It's the same mill where I shot this video with my brother. There's the big tall mill right there. It was a wet day, it was raining a bit, so I decided to take advantage of the puddles. And the next role was take pictures of abstract things. Yeah, and this one, for the first time, I actually messed up. Yeah, you see how dark that is? This is what they're supposed to look like. Yeah, this is what happens when you use straight film developer instead of diluting it one to nine to develop your photos. But for all these hand photos, I use a ring light that I use in most of my videos and, and wanted to do like reaching into darkness or reaching out of darkness and stuff like that. And there's this photo, which is a light shining through the chairs in my living room. And then I took a bunch of photos of some chicken noodle soup. I wanted to get some abstract images and the steam coming off of it. And there's one photo, this one, that looked like a ghost reaching out of it, so I printed that one. And then I didn't know what I was doing wrong, so I kept the straight film developer that I had in my bottle and developed another roll. This one was blur and freeze frame. I had to make the shutter speed really short and really long to have the same photo. I shot some pictures of my brother, my brother on a bike, me spraying the garden hose everywhere. And then I had a leftover firework from 4th of July. I did a short exposure and a long exposure of one. But for the short exposure one, it was like very dim. So these two were the only shots that I printed. So these two were the only shots I printed. That was the best I could get out of those photos. And then I realized what I was doing wrong and I developed it correctly. Well, relatively correctly, because I think the fixer on some of my photos was pretty bad. Yeah, you could see discoloration in some of these photos. For this role was a narrative photo. You had to tell a story using one photo. And out of all of the 36 exposures I did, this photo was the photo I took. It was about a monster coming into your room every night. And, and the character, me, was so obsessed with it that he kept on drawing it with charcoal over and over, putting it on his walls until one day, it's, it came up closer to him and started talking to him. I shot this at like f16 because because the model of the character was only like this big and it was close to the lens and even even still it's slightly out of focus but at least it still looks good and then for the rest of the semester my teacher said you could take photos of anything you want for the final portfolio so i took pictures outside one day and look there's my cat cole i took a long exposure photo of the night sky hoping that it would turn out good and, and, and it turned out pretty good and then I went to Home Depot and then took some lenticular glasses, which, you know, made rainbows out of every highlight. But in black and white, it turned out good. I shined a light through a vent from my basement and it came out looking like this. 
and then while I was driving, I turned up the radio so much that the rear view mirror was shaking, so I wanted to take a photo of the blur in the rear view mirror. I think only this shot came out good. And then I decided to take long exposure photos of me swinging around steel wool. Yeah, you can look up videos about that, it's really cool. I decided to print this one because I didn't even know that that would happen. I didn't know that me moving it would look like a force field. I thought it would just be a circle like all the other ones. And then here's a photo of my friend's dog, Daisy. It's the same dog from my Polaroid video. Get, get a lot closer. Daisy! Daisy, come here. And then I decided to take a photo of a Lego guy holding a film reel, which is from my stop motion video on my other channel. Click right here for that video. It's my best stop motion I've ever made. And it was foggy one day, so I took my camera out and shot some photos. And then I went to my favorite beach, Harkness Beach, and shot some photos of the walkway and, the, and some freeze frame photos of the ocean. And that's all the photos I shot for my first year of photography. And since I couldn't get enough of that photography class, I decided to take another semester of it, Photography 2. And for that semester, I had to make a portfolio of a certain theme and have every photo I take of that class before the final portfolio. Now, most of the other people in my class took photos of abandoned buildings and horses and, um, and abstract shadows on the ground. But no, I decided to take photos of staged Lego pictures. So to start off, I just had a bunch of ideas for just random scenes for Legos. I started off with putting a Lego guy in my four big Lego Creator City sets and just spraying water on him to make it look like it's raining. There was a bunch of shots and with some varying degrees of water, but this one had the most rain. And then I decided to make a Lego version of the horror monster shot that I made in my first semester. And here it is. And then I took a picture of a Lego adventurer guy because I don't have any Indiana Jones minute figures. Just outside on the pavement during a rainstorm because I thought the bokeh would look cool. And then these shots are of Dracula, Frankenstein, and Wolfman all fighting. I had a TV in the background showing this castle, but I had two lights. One for the moon in that shot shining down on them, but I didn't know that I had another light that was glaring just directly in the frame. And I shot way too many shots without knowing that. But I shot one more roll of film of that scene and it was one shot that looked moody and had... SHUT UP! There was one shot that looked good and had moody lighting, this one. And then I had that same Lego Adventurer guy. I wanted to take a picture of him in a cave with a skeleton. Here's that shot. And then I had 3200 ISO film. I just wanted to see what kind of shots I can get with that. And I got a Lego family around a campfire telling each other spooky stories. And a creature from the Black Lagoon scene, which actually I put it underwater. Well, I had a bucket full of water and I put the Legos in it. So I thought it was doing pretty good. So when a critique came, I put up my best pictures on the wall, which were these at that time. But all my classmates were like, what, why is that picture so grainy? I can't even see the Lego guy in this picture. Like, what even is this? Where is he? Like, what's the point of all this? And I was like, maybe I should just take pictures of abandoned buildings. But I took a deep breath and decided to retake a bunch of pictures. I retook the creature from the Black Moon picture. I retook this picture to have him look like he's going through a jungle, which was basically just grass. And I retook the picture of the leg guy in the rain. And towards the end of the semester, I realized that since I had to have 12 pictures or six and six of a certain theme, I decided that I would have six pictures of the Lego Adventurer guy going through different stories and six pictures of 1930s-esque scenes. And for those six, I decided to have three pictures of a 1930s romance movie and a 1930s horror movie. I decided to take this photo of the Frankenstein's lab, and this was a sparkler. And for most of these shots, I took my digital camera and took pictures of the shot first with digital. Here is the Frankenstein's lab. Here is the creature from the Black Lagoon. And 
and then for the three pictures for a 1930s romance movie, I decided to use the rainy picture as the end. So I recreated this image of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers in Lego. And then I had them have dinner at a restaurant, and he proposes with a ring, but the woman isn't having it, so she ditches him and leaves him in the rain. And then I took pictures of the Lego Adventurer guy outside, next to some hyacinths, and I built a cave set and sprayed some fog everywhere to have it be atmospheric. So here is my final portfolio for my second year of photography. It starts off with this Adventurer guy, or Ace Brickman, I didn't really name him, in his office. And then he goes out in a jungle, or just, you know, the grass. He sees some very large flowers, some hyacinths. He climbs really high off the ground on a piece of bamboo. He goes into a cave and sees a dead skeleton. And he finds the cave with the treasure in it. But oh no, it's being guarded by a bunch of snakes. And then we have the Lego monster pictures. We have Frankenstein being, you know, brought to life with a Lego sparkler. We have the creature from the Black Lagoon. And we have the Monster Mash with Mummy, Werewolf, Frankenstein, and Dracula. And then we have the 1930s romance pictures. Fred and Ginger dancing together. Them at a restaurant, and the guy takes out a ring. But then he gets left in the rain. So that was all the Lego 35mm film I shot for my Photography 2 class. But that's not all I did in my Photography 2 class. I took some 120 film pictures. So for my first time ever shooting 120 film, I used a Holga. It was just a simple point and shoot, fixed focus, fixed aperture camera. For my first roll, I accidentally double exposed a bunch of photos. But for my second roll, I learned my lesson. And then for the third roll of my Holga pictures, I had to take pictures that looked like it was in a dream world. So I decided to make long exposure pictures of light painting, but not just light painting with steel wool. I used a flamethrower, well, more like my blow, a blowtorch and some aerosol spray. And I moved it around my brother who was just standing still. For a bunch of shots. But I didn't only use the Holga for 120 film. I used my dad's Hasselblad camera. Hasselblad. And I went back to that old mill because it's just so interesting to take pictures of. And I shot two rolls there. Here are the nice square pictures that I took with my first roll. And for this shot, I wanted to take a panorama that I would stitch together in Photoshop. Here it is. And here's my second roll. This is the picture I printed of my first Holga picture. Oh yeah, chicken. And this is my second 120 film I printed. Oh yeah, look at that crisp quality. But putting 120 film on small eight by 10 sheets of paper is just doing it a disservice. So I printed on 11 by 14 sheets. And here is the Hasselblad picture. Oh yeah, that's even better. So that was all the photos I shot, developed, and printed myself in my photography classroom in my college. And speaking of college, oh geez, it's almost September. So you know what that means? School starting up again, yay! I do have some more semesters in my college to go. That means I'm gonna have less time to make these videos, but I'll still make them. And I do have a bunch of videos almost done right now. So keep watching and I'll see you next time.